Fantasy TV. When I first found out that uh, Trump had the CV one niner, I said, "What the hell? Oh, why'd you do that, DJT? Why did you do that?" No, you know, I was frustrated with why you would even get tested every day. <laughs> Do I have the CV19? <laughs> Do I have the CV19? I'm like, duh, why, why? But then, then, uh, my wiser self prevailed, and as I reflected on it, I realized that this will all but guarantee the man's re-election. From the edge of the bottom of the Florida and Peninsula, sorry, it's a show a little bit about politics, <laughs> but I'm going to tie in Revelation 13, going to talk about the man of lawlessness and Revelation 6, going to talk about the white horse rider, and you're going to get updated information based on the political environment right now. As you know, in the United States, we're in the midst of a big election uh, process, a big campaign process, and the president of the United States has come down with CV19 and his lovely wife. And I realize what a great thing this is. And I'm going to tell you all about that. I'm going to tell you how it fits in with the white horse rider of uh, Revelation chapter 13. But first, I do have to tell you, remember, there is a conference coming up and I this thing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's in Mansfield, Missouri. It's kind of in the middle of everything. Mansfield, Missouri, even though it's an isolated part of Missouri, Missouri itself is in the middle of the country. So you should be able to get here. There's so many people coming here. In fact, uh, Michael Knotts, the sponsor of the conference, sent me a list so far of people. We have Mark, Kayla, Rich, Rick, Manfred, Wes, Dean, Nancy, Bill, Alicia, Seth, Wes, Matthew, Billy, Lisa, Sam, Jesse, Chris, another Nancy, Javier, and there is the anonymous wife, daughter, friend, friend. I don't know. That's just on the list. Wife, daughter, friend, friend. See there, wife, daughter, friend, friend. I don't know who the wife, daughter, friend, friend is, but they're coming. HH is coming. Yes, HH. Michelle's coming, Len, Bob, Sean, Teresa, Selena, Joseph, Sandy, Anita, and yours truly. I mean, this is going to be amazing. Watch show 530, The Humble Transmission of Truth. My show, MZTV 530. You'll get information. It's all there. Michael Knotts' address, his phone number, his email address. Contact him. The game is on. As my friend Dean Wilkinson says, it's on like Donkey Kong. Uh, however... Uh, Michael Knotts did give the wrong zip code at first. So the zip code you're going to see on show 530 is incorrect. The zip code of Mansfield, Missouri is 65704. Again, go to MCTV 530 for all the information. I'm going to be there. This is going to be uh, spectacular. As I told you, Manfred Jones is flying with me, and um, I can't wait to see everybody there. So... As I told you, the opponents of the president, uh, the radical left, I would call them. Uh, oh, sorry for the redundancy there, but um, they have purposely built up this CV-19 into the Black Plague. They have constantly been pushing it and pushing it, and they want it to kill people. They want it to destroy the economy, anything to disrupt the momentum that the president is on for re-election, as far as how great the economy was before the CB 19er hit. But low and behold, not just low, no, low and behold, by building this thing up, as I told you before, by artificially making this thing into the Black Death, which it is not. Did you know that most, there's a large percentage of Americans, maybe 30%, who think that getting infected with the virus, having it detected in your system as the president has, there's a large, an appalling number of people who think it's a death sentence. Well, no, it's not really 
In fact, there's a 99% recovery rate. I mean, it is, I mean, taking all age groups into consideration. That's not quite a death sentence, is it now? And there's a large swath of Americans, an appalling number, somewhere around 25%. Now, around 20%, I think. It's hard to find this anymore on the internet because the search engines have shut it down. They think, most people think, not most people, but a lot of people think that if you ask them how many people have died in the United States, they think it's in the millions. They think like 20 million people have died. It's because of the news coverage because they're overblowing the whole thing. But, as I was saying, by doing that, they are going to turn Trump into a conqueror. Trump, the reason the title of this show is Trump Recovers, is that I'm not altogether convinced that he's sick. He might have the virus. You might have the virus. I may have the virus. Half of the U.S. population might have the virus. But a vast percentage of those people never have symptoms. They don't even know it. Then it just lives in there and hangs out, you know, hangs out with some blood cells or near the kidneys. I don't know what it does. I don't know where it stays. I don't know where it lives. But it hibernates like a bear in the winter. And it doesn't even want to wake up. You can't even nudge it awake. It just says, I just want to live here. I'm the CB19 er and I'm going to hide in here. Now, I people do get it and people do perish from it yes but the death toll in the united states states which they claim to be 220,000 people have died from cv19 not true not true because even the center for centers for disease control itself the cdc came out and said that well that number probably only Six or seven percent of that numbers actually died of CV19. The rest of them, they had complications. 2.6 on the average of those deaths, 2.6 comorbidities. In, in, in other words, almost three other life threatening things were existent in the patients who, quote, died from CV19. In other words, they've died with it, but not of it. They detected it in their system. So it's been exaggerated. So by doing that, the left, the opponents of the president, have provided the president with this ultra-conquering thing because it's going to be easy to come up with a vaccine because this thing's not much more complicated than the common cold. But when the president comes up with a vaccine probably by the end of the year, it's going to seem like a miracle. It's a miracle, a vaccine against the Black Plague. No, it's not much more complicated than the common cold, but it looks spectacular because the left has built it up into this Mount Rushmore of impossibility. And now, ooh, the president has cv 19 and they're hoping it's a death sentence, his enemies. They hope he dies, which is that's not helping them either. Every time somebody in the news media says even subliminally we hope trump dies they're not actually saying it but well it's his own fault he doesn't want to wear a mask blah 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 keep talking every time they say it the president will get sympathy votes because they make themselves look what they are which is hateful so it's really sick it's really sick but it's helpful to trump's re-election chances so imagine when the president recovers from this quote unquote recovers from it he comes back as a conqueror as a conqueror there now he's not only the economy beater he's the virus beater he's come back from the brink of death and so somebody asked me do you think that uh, this is the death wound this is the wound that the man of lawlessness gets that he miraculously recovers from then the whole world lauds him and praises him and worships is the interesting thought i'm going to go over that in as i said revelation 13 but first before i do that let's go to the unveiling uh chapter six because in chapter six we read of the the four horsemen the fabled four horsemen of the apocalypse the white horse red horse uh black and green the white horse being the conqueror the the false messiah the red horse being war 
the uh, black horse being plague, the green horse being, no, the black horse being famine, and the black horse, uh, the green horse being death. Yeah, wonderful thing. It's only war, famine, and death. But I want to look at the white horse conqueror because as I told you, the white horse conqueror is white. <laughs> But this is not the true white horse rider. There's another white horse rider later in the unveiling of Jesus Christ, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the man, this is the false one. So here is the beginning of chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. I perceived when the lambkin opens one of the seven seals, and I hear one of the four animals saying, as with the voice of thunder, come. And I perceived, and lo, a white horse and he who is sitting on it has a bow, and to him was given a wreath. And he came forth conquering, and that he should be conquering. A wreath is victory in battle. As I told you, I think last year, Trump eliminated ISIS. I mean, he devastated the whole movement because he aggressively went after them, and he didn't didn't coddle them and apologize for them like the previous administration. He expanded the rules of engagement and just said, kill them all and kill them quickly. Great. Don't we want that? Yes, we do. And we saw a couple um, significant leaders of the movement assume room temperature, thanks to the president. So there is a definite conquering. That fits in with the final years of Millennium Six scenario because the beast, not only the man of lawlessness, but the beast system will be an amalgamation, will, will be a Western confederation that subjects the other religions to itself. We learned this from Daniel chapter 7. The four beasts that Daniel saw coming out of the sea are religions. I explain all that in the Revelation series. And the final beast is the most ferocious of all. It is the one that's armed to the teeth. And how many times does Trump boast that we have the number one military in the world? We have these awful weapons of war that, you know, peace through strength. I totally agree with that. In this world, you have to have that. We have this giant uh, arsenal that we will use if you're a jerk. But if you're nice to us, we won't use it. I mean, it's, it's the way it is. That's not our personal the way we personally carry ourselves as members of the body of Christ, but as a national policy, you wouldn't want anything else. Without that, we would all speak, we would all be speaking German, referencing World War II. There's a funny story. Years ago, somebody from France was criticizing the United States and their role in the war in World War II. You know how those French can be, sorry. And, um, in fact, the French person was criticizing a, a, a World War II veteran. I think it was a veteran of D-Day. Well, we don't need the U.S. The U.S. is this, the U.S. is that very derogatory toward the United States. And the soldier asked the French person, can you speak German? The French person said, no. The soldier said, you're welcome. There you go. You got to have the big stick. Now... Little did I realize that the conquering of the White Horse Rider would include disease. I mean, I knew it would include disease overall. I knew that Trump would, be look, would look like a world beater when he came up with a vaccine, which is not very complicated, for the common cold dressed up as a uh, black death virus. And indeed, that is happening. But I didn't foresee that he personally would overcome it, would overcome the virus. So, because, again, because Trump's enemies has, have built this up to be this horrible death sentence, and Trump just whistles through it, being 74 years old, but the guy has the constitution of an Abrams tank, to come through it at age 74, some people say he's overweight, he's not, he's just built like a tank, he's just built like a tank. He has no pre-existing conditions unless you want to count stubbornness and uh, resolve and courage. Unless you want to count those as pre-existing conditions. Those things the CV-19er cannot touch. 
In fact, this thing has only given the president an opportunity, as I say, to conquer once again. And somebody asked me, do you think this could be the death blow spoken of in Revelation 13? That's an interesting question. Let's look at that, and I'll give you my answer. Revelation 13, 1, and I perceive the wild beast. This is the beast system. It's also, it depends on the context, it's also the man of lawlessness. And as I've said to you, I have suggested that Donald Trump is an excellent candidate for the man of lawlessness, otherwise known as the Antichrist, because, again, my criteria for the final deception is the elect would have to be almost deceived if it were possible. In other words, this thing would have to look good to the elect. It can't be an obvious evil. That's the final deception. It's got to be evil disguised as good. It has to be doing legitimately good things like uh, ending foreign wars, improving the economy, improving the lives of common people, uh, preventing war in North Korea, bringing a peace peace to the Middle East, uh, conquering uh, the Black Plague, right? That's how it's going to look, and this is what is happening. And so I'm thinking, this is great. Oh, this is great. By me saying that, it clues me that this could be it. This could be the man of of lawlessness but sometime during the man of lawlessness's career he's going to sustain a wound of some kind he's going to come back and my suggestion to you was when that happens it will no longer be the man of lawlessness as a human being but it will be a a human body inhabited by a demonic force i perceive the wild beast standing ascending out of the sea having ten horns seven heads and on its horns ten diadems, and on its heads blasphemous names. And the wild beast which I perceived was like a leopardess, and its feet were as a bear's, its mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gives it its power, and it's thrown in great authority. And I perceived one of its heads, one of its heads, as if it had been slain to death. And its death blow was cured, and the whole earth marvels after the wild beast." Does this qualify as that? Does this scenario in Revelation 13, could the, could the president overcoming the so-called Black Plague count as overcoming being slain as to death? I say it's, it, it, it's an interesting thought, but I would say no. But I would say that it's a precursor for it. Now, people get the idea that the man of lawlessness will sustain a head wound. They get that from one of its heads, but it's not necessarily a head wound. I mean, I myself might have slipped into saying that. I take it back because the beast is a confederation of 10 political powers. And one of the heads, which is one of the 10 political powers, powers was slain and i perceived one of its heads so this is not the head of a person it's one of the heads of the confederation known as the beast so one of the heads is going to look as though it has been slain to death but its death blow was cured so the reason i don't think that this conquering of the virus is it is because of the word slain and because death blow. This definitely looks like something much more violent and something that is done with a blunt instrument. And uh, But I do think that this is a precursor, but I do think that this is suggestive of it. You might call it a dress rehearsal for it, but it's part of the conquering of the white horse rider. I didn't see this coming, honestly. So this is extremely interesting as far as the situation goes in the final years of Millennium 6. I look, this is what I look for, uh, I look for the president to recover from this terrible thing and everyone will be impressed. He will look stronger than ever. He will come back looking like a linebacker for the Chicago Bears. Uh, and plus that he's going to get sympathy points. Even the left now, they have suspended some of their negative ads, all their negative ads, in respect 
But they realize that if they look like they're piling on, it's going to go bad for them. And yet most of them, the ones that are on television, can't help themselves. They can't dial back their hatred. They're unable to. So they just keep it going, keep it going. And the more they do it, the better it is for Trump. He's going to get sympathy points. And then it's going to look like he's a hero. He's a conqueror. This is the beginning of it. I mean, it's been going on for three and a half years, but this is a continuation of it, I should say. And it's going to get more and more and more. And as I've predicted, I think this will contribute rather than detract from his re-election chances. I don't even think there's any chance. I think that the end time scenario, the final years of Millennium Six we've been talking about necessitates the president being re-elected in, in a grand way. If I'm wrong, we'll see. But if I'm not, we'll also see. Either way, as I said, if Trump loses, then we're even closer than I thought because this thing's going to be fast-tracked. The thing is going to be fast-tracked. And either way, we're in the final months, I believe, of Millennium Six. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Jesus.